Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we will be doing a talk on the 33 definitions of philosophy that I have chosen to present for this class. I am very excited for this video because I love philosophy and you cannot be a philosopher without defining what you are doing. And so therefore, we must define our terms and what philosophy is. And everything that I will be doing on this channel will be teaching philosophy. So it will be a perfect explanation of why I plan on teaching what I teach if there's anybody interested in that. The definitions will be on screen, but you can just listen along while you multitask. I will cite some of my sources, but if I don't cite the source, then just presume that I am the source as I did research on the internet and elsewhere to prepare this class. This will be what different people have said about defining philosophy throughout the ages. It will be defining what philosophy is, what philosophy has been, and what philosophy will be. All my videos will go in depth, otherwise we do not learn something and we aren't systematic. The whole idea is to get as many different perspectives on what philosophy is and has been throughout the ages. For the more complex definitions, I will do an entire video, and some of these definitions require multiple videos. Uh, some of the videos that I will be preparing will have study questions for those who are interested in doing an in-depth study. The study question for this video is, what does philosophy mean to you? So think about that as we move through these definitions, and we're going to start with number one. Philo Sophia, the love of wisdom or friend of wisdom, depending upon the translation. And this is the most um, common definition that people are given when they ask what philosophy is. And so uh, this is very simplistic, um, but it definitely is applicable. So on to definition number two. Philosophy is a belief or a system of beliefs accepted as authoritative by a group or a school of thought. This is very simple. Uh, for example, we have the Aristotelian philosophy. This is a um, system of beliefs accepted as authoritative by a group or a school of thought. Definition number three. Philosophy is a broad tradition that has no limits as in other ideologies. Philosophy does not force a way of living, does not force a way of thinking, nor force political views, nor force a field of study. There are very few ideologies out there that do that, and philosophy attempts to approach the truth from an unbiased perspective, and it should be truly appreciated how much value is brought to philosophy due to the fact that it, it, when people start out, it does not force a way of living, a way of thinking, nor political views, nor a field of study. Definition number four, philosophy is the exchange and adaptation by analysis and synthesis of ideas, usually in a systematic way. The difference between philosophy and other ideologies is that philosophy is systematic. There have been many people who have asked questions about the nature of reality and tried to answer them. But the thing that differentiates philosophy from all those other ideologies is that philosophy is systematic in its approach through exchange and adaptation by analysis and synthesis. Philosophy was also born out of this exchange and adaptation by analysis and synthesis. For example, if you know of Pythagoras, Pythagoras is said to have traveled around Egypt, uh, the Middle East, as well as uh, Greece, uh, Italy, and possibly even India, if you believe that. And so what that means is that philosophy, the, the first person to call himself a philosopher was Pythagoras. And that means philosophy was built out of this exchange and adaptation by analysis and synthesis of ideas. And it's very important that we understand that that is what we're doing in terms of philosophy and that it's about incorporating old ideas of the immutable tradition while creating a new philosophy, but at the same time, leaving behind older aspects that are necessarily 
outdated. And uh, another perfect example would be Plato. If you read Plato's dialogues, there's Socratic philosophy, there's Parmenides, there's Heraclitus, there's Pythagorean philosophy, and much more. When you are dealing with philosophy, fundamentally what we're dealing with is the exchange and adaptation. And this is the method. This is how we do philosophy. So moving on to definition number five and six, because they are very similar. Philosophy is to study existence from the particular to the universal in the broadest sense to know the universe through all the different ways you can and in turn use that for practical things which cause a repeating continuous cycle of further study and advancement. This knowing is of exactness to determine definitively truth and facts from opinion. Philosophy is the mindset to understand all disciplines to have a holistic worldview. Sometimes in this process, new fields of study are created and usually transferred over to the specialist. So the first part of this is that philosophy not only studies the particular, which is like most disciplines, uh, for example, um, simple example, psychology. Psychology studies one aspect. It doesn't study the whole universe. Philosophy studies the whole universe. Philosophy breaks it down into particulars, studies the particulars, and it also studies the entire universe to uh, know it in all the different ways that we can know it, because there are different ways we can know things, and then use that for practical uh, aspects in our life so that we can have a continuous cycle of further study, more knowledge, uh, more advancement. And this is to have a holistic worldview to make a whole out of the parts, because that is a huge part of what philosophy is. It's making a whole out of the parts. This is in uh, Plato's Republic, and I will personally do a long video about what it, this means. But we focus on the holistic perspective while recognizing the particular, whereas most people focus on the particular. This is why philosophy studies everything. And most disciplines come from philosophy, the most recent one being psychology. Uh, for people who didn't know, psychology was originally uh, philosophy. And then uh, through Freud and Jung, uh, it became, well, it was kind of a thing a little bit earlier than that with like William James. Um, but for the most part, Again, that's a, a further example of how psychology came from philosophy. Uh, definition number seven. Philosophy is a specific way of approaching ideas by response, reflection, reason, and reevaluation with the aim to deepen understanding and wisdom. The ideal is that by doing philosophy, we learn to think better, act wiser, and thereby improve the quality of our lives. So this is essentially uh, Plato and Aristotle, uh, classic philosophy. But this is giving us the method and the reason and uh, the purpose. So essentially, philosophy is the specific way of approaching ideas by response, reflection, reason, and reevaluation. This is another method for knowing. And then our goal is to deepen our understanding and wisdom. Um, the whole purpose, again, is to change our lives, to improve the quality of, of our lives. And this is a very holistic definition that gives both the method and the purpose. Moving on to definition number eight. Philosophy is not just asking questions, it's also understanding questions. This is very important. This is uh, why I made sure to say this, is that most people are just asking questions in philosophy, and that's not the whole thing. It's also understanding these questions that we're asking, and that definitely requires a whole video of explanation. So moving on to number nine. To define philosophy, it's not that there aren't any answers, but that the answers are difficult to find due to the fact that we all have to take a personal journey to learn the truth for ourselves. Philosophy is a quest for answers that begins by asking questions. This is why the word quest is in the word question, quest ion, because it is encoded into our language that to ask a question implies a quest for answers. Finally, someone else finding the truth is useless to us unless they share their findings in a way we can understand. So the first thing that's important to, under to recognize in this definition is that 
there's a lot of people who say uh, philosophy is impossible. There's no point in doing it. The answers are impossible to find. There's a lot of people who say this nowadays, and I just want to make every, everyone aware of the fact that philosophy is not impossible. It's just hard. You have to take a personal journey to go on a quest, and it takes a lot of time, energy, and resources to do that. And on the other side, that means it's not easy. Don't have the idea in your mind that philosophy is going to be easy. Philosophy is really not easy, um, but in, in a lot of contexts, understanding the truth can be simple. And so the main thing to take away from this is that you have to be able to go on a personal journey and that if we go on this personal journey, we must be able to communicate our findings in a way that other people can understand. Because if someone comes across truth and they cannot communicate that truth to other people, then it is not necessarily engaging in philosophy. So with that being said, let's move on to definition number 10. Philosophy is a mystery school as a rite of rebirth, and this comes from the philosopher Algis Uzdevenis. He wrote a book called Philosophy is the Rite of Rebirth, and this is rite spelled R-I-T-E, as in a religious action, for example, a rite of passage. This book talks about how philosophy is a mystery school that teaches esotericism. And Pythagoras also started a mystery school as the first philosopher. And another example of this would be how the alchemists are pursuing the philosopher's stone. And so in actuality, I'm going to do multiple videos on this definition. But it's really important to understand that there are many philosophers throughout history, including the first one who taught a mystery school. And this is why my channel is called The Real Mystery School. And so the right of rebirth is very important. We're going to go into this in a whole bunch of upcoming videos. It's basically along the lines of how we change ourselves. We be reborn through uh, this philosophical journey that we go on in terms of how we're changing our lives based on what the new knowledge is that we've learned about, because that's fundamentally what philosophy is. It's about discovering an art of living. And this will culminate in a form of self-education. And that's really the goal of this channel is to teach self-education. But it's very important to understand that philosophy is a mystery school that teaches a right of rebirth. Moving on to definition number 11. Philosophy is not just about finding answers. It's about changing the way you live to reflect those truths. It's very simple. Philosophy is about changing the way we live, pure and simple. It doesn't matter if we're talking about classic philosophers, such as Plato or the Stoics or if we're talking about more recent philosophers such as Karl Marx and communism. Imagine if communism had nothing to do with changing the way you lived. It wouldn't be communism and it wouldn't be philosophy because philosophy is fundamentally about changing the way that we live. And there are a lot of people who do not understand this. This is part of the reason why I'm calling myself a real philosopher is because philosophy is about changing the way you live to reflect the truths that you come upon. And so let's move on to definition number 12. Philosophy is a tradition as in an invisible brotherhood family. All philosophers may not follow the same tradition, but all philosophers are working together to pursue the truth. So this um, is another mystery school definition, essentially, because if anyone understands what the Rosicrucians are, they're called an invisible brotherhood. But what I'm really trying to get at here is that when you study philosophy, when people study philosophy, Plato, uh, Ayn Rand, uh, Kant, they didn't sit down and have a conversation, but they all produced works pursuing truth in the same kind of lineage and tradition in terms of the systematic expression about knowing and all of the ideas that I previously explained through um, the definitions already stated. So 
it's very important to understand that this is kind of like an invisible brotherhood, an invisible family. And that is a wonderful idea to me. So let's move on to uh, definition number 13 with that. Philosophy is to engage in dialectic, theoria, and or theurgy. The dialectic is fundamental to philosophy. In my opinion, philosophy can't really be done without the dialectic. There's many different forms of the dialectic, but uh, just to keep it simple, uh, the most common one I will refer to on this channel is giving birth to new ideas by having a conversation, and this is called philosophical midwifery. This comes from Socrates and subsequently Plato. And so moving on to theoria, theoria also comes from the Platonic tradition. It comes from a Neoplatonist called Plotinus. And basically what theoria is, it's a form of uh, contemplation in which we ascend to a mystical experience of the one or the monad. This is a, another mystery school definition. Moving on to theurgy. Theurgy means theos ergos or God working it is essentially a form of ceremonial magic. We don't know exactly what the Neoplatonists, uh, for example, Iamblichus and Proclus were doing with theurgy. And I will be making videos on theurgy to explain it more in depth. But simply put, we must understand that a huge part of philosophy is in one respect to engage in the dialectic, the theoria, and theurgy. Moving on to definition number 14. Philosophy is a long conversation between people from all throughout time and space that you need to read a lot about before you can participate. Uh, I made this definition. Uh, a perfect example of this would be watching Hillsdale College online course for philosophy because you get to see how uh, people publish works such as Plato and then Plato uh, had a student called Aristotle and Aristotle responded to the works published by Plato and he published his own works. And then this started a chain reaction um, called the dialectic throughout history in which um, usually speaking, you have to read a lot about before you can really participate because when we're reading people like Kant, uh, Hegel or Nietzsche, they're referencing a lot of ideas from previous philosophers that a unsuspecting person would not necessarily recognize in terms of the indication that it's giving for its previous inspiration for those ideas or what exactly the arguments are in play. So it's very important to understand this definition. Definition number 15, philosophy is those ideas that won its error in thought. This is Hegel. So philosophy is those ideas that won its error in thought. And basically what that means is philosophy is a battle of wits. We get into very fierce arguments with philosophy. Uh, like I was saying earlier, different philosophers publish books as a form of dialectic. And the books that end up on our bookshelves are the ideas that won, won those arguments, won the battle of the wits. And I love Hegel. So moving on to definition number 16. Philosophy proper deals with matters of interest to everyone and loses much value if only a few professionals can understand it. And this is coming from Bertrand Russell. So essentially, it's really under, uh, important to understand that philosophy cannot just be for the uh, class of people who take the time to read all the things that are needed to understand, to break down all of these arguments, to understand Hegel and Nietzsche and Marx and uh, Plato and Aristotle. It's also for the common person because the common person must also be able to change their life based on the knowledge that was communicated to them by the philosophers. And so moving on to definition number 17, philosophy is a rigorous, disciplined, guarded analysis of the most challenging problems we have ever faced. And this is coming from a man named Henderson. Uh, this is really important to understand how the system is applied. When someone says that philosophy is systematic, it's because it's rigorous, disciplined, guarded analysis of the most challenging problems we have ever faced.
Moving on to definition number 18, philosophy is mysticism and magic to obtain gnosis. This is just another example of a mystery school definition, and it's to kind of counterbalance the previous definition. It's not just rigorous, disciplined, guarded analysis of the most challenging problems we have ever faced. It's also mysticism and magic to obtain gnosis. So with that, let's move on to definition number 19. Philosophy is the science and criticism of cognition. This is coming from Immanuel Kant. And essentially what this means is that when we go through the process of knowing this is coming from cognition and we must necessarily uh, criticize this in a very systematic way, which is usually understood to be a form of science, and criticizing our knowing faculties has allowed us to gain knowledge because as Plato explains in the dialogues, there's a lot of things that humans do that don't really understand is incoherent, such as claiming to have knowledge when you don't have knowledge, when it's not been epistemologically verified or uh, fact-checked. And then once it's been fact-checked by the science and criticism of our cognition, then we can call it knowledge. And so this is very important to understand in terms of what philosophy is. It's also about the uh, mental processes that are going through um, this situation, such as, for example, uh, Plato talks about um, in the Republic, he talks about gaining courage to pursue justice. We must understand how the um, aspect of courage plays into pursuing the art of living of of living a just life. So let's move on to definition number 20. Philosophy is the science of science, and this comes from a man named Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Essentially, philosophy is the systematic expression of ideas that created science, and so therefore it will always be the science of science. Definition number 21. Philosophy is a science that discovers the real nature of supernatural elements. I love this definition. It's coming from Aristotle. If you think about philosophy throughout the ages, this will actually make perfect sense to you as philosophy is the science that discovered the real nature of supernatural elements or things that were believed to be supernatural elements. And if you're looking for a rational metaphysics, please check out my other video on proof of God. But let's move on. So definition number 22, philosophy is not only the study of Maya, but is also the study of self-knowledge through the Atman, including Brahman. So this is a definition coming from me. And basically what this means is that we cannot just study the transient reality of Maya, but we must also study self-knowledge through the Sanskrit term, the Atman, and how the self pervades the universe, uh, Sanskrit term Brahman for uh, self pervading the universe. But the main idea of this is to focus on self-knowledge and not just transient reality. Moving on to definition number 23. Philosophy is the interpretation of the world in order to change it. This is coming from Karl Marx. This is super simple and uh, something that I really uh, like uh, because it is practical. Although um, when taken uh, too far, we may change the world too much and that's not necessarily a good thing. But that's talk for a different time. Let's move on to definition number 24. Philosophy is a daily activity. And this has come from Socrates. If it wasn't a daily activity, it wouldn't be a way of life. Uh, and essentially what that means is that the individual who calls themselves a philosopher must practice every day. Otherwise, they will not be able to live a true, good, and beautiful life because practice makes perfect. Uh, essentially, simply put, Philosophy is a way of living that is a daily activity. Moving on to definitions number 25 and 26, which are very similar. Um, philosophy is the mother of all arts and the true medicine of the mind. This is coming from Marcus Cicero. Number 26, philosophy is a panacea. If studying philosophy did not make you happier than before you started studying philosophy, then you are studying the wrong philosophers. So uh, panacea basically means... Um, uh, a cure-all, uh, a medicine for everything. And so to uh, begin, uh, philosophy is the mother of all arts. Art is uh, just another word for technique. And so it's the 
ideology that gave birth to all of these different techniques and science um, that we now have today. And it is the true medicine of the mind because if we do discover an art of living in which we are no longer slaves to our passions, then we can find a eudaimonia in which we do indeed have fulfillment and satisfaction for the mind, body, and the spirit in terms of creating a true medicine for the mind. This is hugely important to me while studying philosophy, that it's also about making, you know, you happier pursuing a true, good, and beautiful life. And so with that being said, let's move on to definition number 27, which is kind of an opposing view. Philosophy is not a panacea for all our problems, but it is that which emerges out of the methods employed by us to solve our problems. And this is coming from the philosopher John Dewey. And basically, although he means it in a opposing context to the previous statement, um, <clears throat> let me just say one thing that I want to make clear. And that is, even if we do take the previous statement for granted, and that uh, philosophy is about discovering the true good and beautiful life, that doesn't fix all of our problems. That's not a cure all. There's still other aspects of our life that are going to um, have uh, a lot of complications with them. And so fundamentally, we need to understand that even though philosophy is a true medicine of the mind, it's not a cure all. And so with that, let's move on to uh, definition number 28. Philosophy is an attempt to think truly about human experience and to make it intelligible for others. This is kind of a repetition of what I already said, but essentially philosophy cannot be done unless we can communicate our ideas to other people. We must be able to make it intelligible for other people. They must be able to understand the philosopher. Otherwise, it's not really philosophy. A perfect example is this, of this is that people talked about the true, good, and the beautiful before Plato, but it wasn't until Plato's articulation that was really like a, a second birth to philosophy that created what we have today in our tradition. So with that being said, let's move on to definition number 20. So for definition number 29, philosophy is the study of all causes, both visible and invisible. This is coming from Aristotle. This is my favorite definition right now because primarily I'm concerned with studying the causes, both visible and invisible, as my focus at this moment being a philosopher. So let's move on to definition number 30. Philosophy is an act of criticism or clarification. This is coming from DJ Connor. Uh, and so this has two aspects to it. Uh, fundamentally speaking, this is why we're defining our terms. You can't really communicate anything without uh, criticism and clarification. And on the other side, this is very platonic because one of the things that Plato and Socrates mentions in the platonic dialogues is that there are many people throughout, you know, average society that talk about justice and um, other aspects like the good, and they don't understand what these things are. And so it's very important that we criticize and clarify when we are doing philosophy, even if it may kind of seem like you're the bad guy in the conversation, it's still important to do the criticism and the clarification. So let's move on to definition number 31. Philosophy is the study of the eternal forms and is not concerned with transient pleasure. To bring the eternal forms into our art of living to become a perfected being, we remember these forms by engaging in the dialectic. So essentially, uh, this definition is about understanding the eternal forms and bringing these forms into our performance. For example, we mentioned justice throughout this uh, video and pursuing the just life. Essentially, that is about taking a form and putting it into your way of living so that you have the form of the just human being. 
this definition is very broad and I will do many videos on all of all of the aspects of this definition. So let's move on to definition number 32, development of the soul. This is coming from Plato. Uh, essentially, this is um, very uh, mystery school in one aspect in terms of the fact that he's talking about an eternal uh, transmigration in that we are beings with a soul that does not die when the body discorporates and the soul moves on to different bodies uh, through a form of transmigration. And so philosophy then is the development of the soul as a mystery school. Another aspect is um, psychology. If you ever go to a therapist and you want some kind of psychotherapy, in actuality, you're going to have to develop your soul because the word psyche is a Greek word meaning soul. So when we do psychology, what we're really talking about, like it said in the previous definition, philosophy is the true medicine of the mind. Philosophy is also about developing the soul so that we can achieve that medicine of the mind. Another aspect of this would be developing personal reality. I'm not going to get into this because my doctrine of personal reality is something I'm going to do many videos on. Moving on to definition number 33, and this will be the last one. Philosophy is used to discover an art of living by controlling the passions to pursue the true good and beautiful uh, life for eudaimonia. And there's many different aspects. I'm not really going to go into this definition. This is coming from Plato uh, and the art of living is really what we're concerned with as philosophers. What that means is that we're not slaves to our passions and that we pursue the true good and beautiful life for a eudaimonia, for a form of um, life well lived. And so that is truly important in terms of philosophy. And so let's uh, complete this video by summarizing a few main points. Throughout this video, I defined what philosophy is, what I will be doing on this channel called The Real Mystery School, and why I call myself a real philosopher. It's because philosophy is about changing the way we live. It's not just about arguments and intellectual activity. And as uh, a real mystery school, I will be teaching what I know about the mysteries of life, love, and the universe. In my opinion, people should really understand all 33 definitions because in my perspective, the reason that philosophy has seen a decline in value is that people do not accurately grasp that philosophy is a way of living. It's not just a form of argumentation. It's about discovering an art of living so that we can pursue a true, good, and beautiful life. Please comment your favorite definition. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the class and want to support this content. Uh, don't forget, the study question is, what does philosophy mean to you? Reflect on what you've learned. For those people who are interested, how can you change your life? Because changing your life is living philosophy, and that's the perfect way to see if the philosophy is practical, is if it's livable. Because if it's not livable, then that's the perfect way of knowing that it is not an acceptable philosophy. So for those people who are interested, please uh, do the study question. What does philosophy mean to you? You can either write it in the comments or you can write a couple paragraphs to a page. Join the Amino that will be in the link in the description below. And this will be for training, for school, for social. Um, but overall, the, uh, if you're interested in a real study of philosophy, performing the dialectic is vital. So whether or not you're going to school, whether or not you're pursuing your own uh, education, or whether or not you just want to be social for, with people, I highly recommend that you join the philosophy amino so that we can get a whole bunch of people together pursuing a true good and beautiful life so 
Uh, with that, I want to thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time at The Real Mystery School.